Welcome to part 4 on this video series. In the previous videos we have seen how to create a login and registration form with Flutter and how to hook it up with Firebase so that users can authenticate. In this video we will see how to extend this simple application by adding a new welcome screen that the users will get to after they log in successfully. So I will show you how to handle the transition between the existing login page and the new home page. And in the process of doing this, I'll talk more about state management and how we can transform our login page into something that you can reuse across your project. First of all, I want to show you a diagram of what we will be building. So. This is really just a snapshot of what we have so far. We have a my application widget, which is the root of our widget tree. And in the previous videos, we built the login widget. So this is all fairly simple. What we are going to do now is introduce a, some new elements to this view hierarchy. We are going to create a root widget or root page, which will take care of deciding whether we should display the login page down here or the new home page. And the way we are going to do this is by checking what is the authentication status of the user. So we are going to build the following sequence. When the app starts for the first time, we will be not signed in. So we will go straight into the login page. Here the user will be able to enter the email and password. And if everything goes well, it will then send a message back to the root page saying that the user is signed in. This will update the state of the root page and will swap out the login page for the new home page. Because now the user is signed in, we will be rendering the home page and this will contain a button to sign out the user again. If the user taps on that button, then we get back to the root widget, we update the state again, and we're going to be back to the login screen. So I will show you exactly how we're going to build this. And one thing that I want to draw your attention to is the fact that all these arrows that I drawn here refer to events for signing the user in or out of the application. Now, previously, I have shown you how we have added the Firebase integration code inside this login page. And because now we are going to be extending this login page and build multiple pages that possibly will have to communicate with Firebase, um, we are going to, to, to be using these methods again. So I think this is a very good time to actually try to do a little bit of refactoring. And the purpose of this is to move some of the code for signing in um, into a separate class. And that will make it into a component that can be reused across uh, different uh, projects if you wish to do that and writing modular code is something that we should aim to do always when we build apps. So let's go ahead and uh, here we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it oat.dart and what we are going to do in here is to define a new class that we're going to call oat and this class is going to have a couple of methods for now. So one of them is going to be sign in with email and password. And it will take an uh, uh, email and password. And what we are going to do now is to take the code that we have for Firebase in here, and we are actually going to put it in here. Uh, obviously, because we are importing the Firebase uh, code, we need also import Firebase authentication module. And again, because this code is asynchronous here, we are going to need to use an await keyword and mat map this uh, by making also our method asynchronous. The last thing I need to do is to correct these parameters quickly like so. And then we are almost ready. The last thing I want to do is I want to make this method return a future, uh, which will uh, on completion return a string. 
uh, because I imported future here, I also need to do import dart uh, dot async, which will make this happy. And finally, I'm ready to return uh, my user dot uid. Now, you might ask why I decided here to return a string rather than the Firebase user itself. And the reason for that is that really here we are trying to build a generic authorization component. So that after we finish building this, uh, the login page will just be able to use this alt class and it won't even need to know that internally it uses Firebase. The fact that it uses Firebase will be an implementation detail, but in the future we could swap this out with a different authentication provider and still uh, keep the same interface. And while uh, I talk about interfaces, I also want to introduce a different concept. So let me just write some code and then I will explain what this is for. So I'm going to say abstract class base out, abstract class base out. Um, and I'm going to say that this abstract class has a method inside called signing with email and password. And then I'm going to say that this auth class implements base auth. What is this about? So abstract class is a way of defining an interface for classes to implement. And let me show you how I'm going to do to use this. And, and that way I can explain to you why this is a powerful and important concept. So if I go back to my login page, I can here say now import out dot dart and what I can do is to say that this login page will now take a base out out parameter as a dependency and because I want to pass this from outside I'm going to say this dot out. So um, what does this syntax mean? I have added a new uh, member variable to my login page of type base alt and I'm gonna call it alt and I decided that when I create a login page I need to be passing in an instance of this um, abstract class that I have defined. So in order for this code to, co to compile uh, now I need to add a new alt parameter when I create the login page from my uh, main app. And so the way I can do this is to say that I'm going to pass a new out and I need to import it as well. And, and so look at what happened here. I have modified my login page to now take an old parameter when it, is in, when it is initialized. And this old parameter is a type base old, which is our abstract class. However, when I do create it from my main app, I pass a concrete instance of type auth, which implements the base auth interface. So because I pass an instance of the class auth uh, to my login page when I create it, it means that it will use the Firebase auth implementation under the hood and it will talk to Firebase. Uh, however, if I wanted to swap this out for a different implementation in the future, all I would have to do would be to define a different authorization class that will still implement base auth, but uh, my login page uh, will still work as intended. So that's a way of separating concerns and, and that's a way of making code more modular. Okay, enough lecturing for now and we can get back to writing some code. So we can now use this alt instance that we passed in to replace the Firebase code that we had in place previously. So let's see how we might do that. I'm going to say that I'm going to have a string user ID, which is going to be a weight of widget.alt.signing with email and password. And I'm going to pass in the email and the password. And then I can use this and print it directly in my print statement. So, just note one thing. Here, in order to access the alt object, I'm using this widget.alt 
syntax. And the reason we do that is that in here we are inside our login page state class. And so if we ever want to access uh, members of functions that are defined in the login page, which is our state for widgets, we can always access them through this uh, widget uh, property. So this is a pattern that you will see over and over when you write Flutter apps. So we have moved our sign in with the mail and password Firebase method inside our old class. And now we want to do exactly the same thing with create user with email and password. So if we go back into the org class, we can create a new method that again will return a string. It will be called create user with email and password and it will take the email and the password. This will also be a sync. And inside here, we are going to then say await firebase out dot instance dot create user with the mail and password and we'll be specifying the email and the password. And just like we did before, we can say that this is a firebase user and we're going to return the user dot UID. Because we added this new method to the concrete class auth, uh, we can also add it to the base auth class so that it will be visible to our login page. And, and then we are finally ready to say string user ID. And here we're going to await for a widget dot dot create user with email and password. And we're just gonna pass in the email and password. And just like we did before, we are going to print our registered user. Okay, so our refactor is now complete and we should be able to reload the application and see if this still works correctly in our simulator. So we have made quite a lot of changes. So um, I don't think how to reload will work in this case, but we're just going to uh, rebuild and restart the application again. And uh, while we wait for the simulator to restart, uh, I also wanted to point out that, as you can see here, uh, we have an unused import. And in fact, we no longer need to import Firebase authentication inside our login page because all that is handled inside our Earth component. Okay, so now the simulator should be up and running. It's just starting up. And now if we try to log in, with the credentials that we registered previously. We should now get a signed in user. So everything is working as intended. Okay, so we have taken quite a bit of a detour from our original goal, which was to introduce a, a new root component and a home page. Uh, this is what we are going to be doing next. Uh, but just to quickly review what we've done uh, in this video is we have uh, moved all the Firebase authentication logic into a separate component called auth. Uh, we have created an abstract class which is used uh, so that we can um, better separate concerns and, and so that we can, for example, swap out auth for a different uh, class in the future uh, that might use a different authentication provider if we wanted to. Um, we have passed the new auth um, instance as a, as a parameter to our login page and we have made sure that when we create it in our main app uh, this is now passing it as a parameter. So in the next video uh, we are actually going to build the root and the home pages as I originally promised so uh, stay tuned and I'll see you on the next video.